All right, so this is Jeff Howald, and this one thing we can do at Banjo Warehouse because we have a studio about 30 yards from where the banjos are, and I can walk in here and show you the banjo, and that way when you get it, it you're not surprised. Okay, so what we have here is an Aria banjo, and I'm gonna play it as I'm playing. Our new cameraman will be uh, getting ready for the next shot, so uh, let's, let's listen to what this one sounds like. shot and then uh, we'll start with the pot which you see right there and, and let's look at this banjo the first thing to mention these are Japanese banjos made in Japan kind of during the golden era where they were copying the uh, quality of the United States in fact the uh, some of the instruments some of the guitars are actually better than what was made in the United States so when we get one of these banjos that's been sitting in a closet for like 30 or 40 years of course, they're out of adjustment, and there are some, some things that we're able to correct, and so what we do is take this really great banjo with great parts, and we make sure that everything is working perfectly, okay? So let's, let's look at the condition first of all, and we're gonna just do a close-up. There you go, and you can see the tag on there, and you can look at the metal, see how nice and shiny that is? Okay. Now, these banjos do have a little pitting on them. They're not absolutely perfect, but you can see that the banjo just sparkles, okay? Now, I'm going to turn the banjo over here for a second again, and you can see the resonator, which is, uh, I believe that's a mahogany resonator, okay? Now, 40 years ago, when these were made, the quality of wood that they could get was much better. Second point is that whenever you make an instrument, particularly if it's not an expensive instrument, if the wood isn't dried out during that first year, it will maybe warp and need adjustment, okay? It doesn't ruin the instrument, but if it needs adjustment and you don't have anybody in your town that can adjust it, then it becomes a pretty major problem. So, so what we have here is a uh, instrument that has been stable for over 30 years. Now, if you think about it, the Stradivarius violins that were made 400 years ago or so uh, are worth millions because that age does something special. Okay, so let's pan up the neck here. And you'll see this has a dots. And we're going to head towards the headstock. And there you go. And we'll do a close-up. Okay, now the keys. Keys are really important. I'm going to turn it over. You're going to see the keys here. Okay. So what we did on this banjo, we put, we added new keys. Okay. And that's very critical because that means that once you uh, tune the banjo, it's going to stay in tune. And particularly if you're a beginner and have trouble tuning, you don't want it just jumping all over the place. The second thing we did, which is extraordinarily critical, is we'll go back down the neck to this key right here. We'll keep going. The microphone's in the way. Okay, we'll move that in a minute. Okay, so that is a geared fifth peg. So all these keys are new. They work perfectly. It'd be like rebuilding your engine on a car. All right, and you heard it play, but I'm going to play it uh, one more time, and uh, then we'll go to the next banjo. And uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so just hold on for a second. I'm going to 
reach over here and get banjo number two. This, this is also a banjo that's made in Japan, much more expensive. And we'll uh, do a little tuning here. In case you have a, a question about it, this is banjo number 725. So if you see a banjo and you like it, just remember that number. So this is 725. Okay, so we'll look at this banjo again and we'll start at the, uh, the bass. And there we go. And you'll see, now when we get these banjos, they don't look very good at all, okay? Now, look at how the uh, metal really shines. Now let's do it as close as we can get to the uh, right in this area so we can look at the metal. I just want to show them that the flange, you'll see that there's some pitting on it and that's pretty uh, typical. In other words, if you buy a $100,000 Gibson Banjo, it usually has that on it, okay? So we have the full-size flange, we have the thick tension hoop, we've got a really good tailpiece, and then let's go up the, uh, the neck and the neck is rosewood with the uh, bow tie inlays. And once again, stopping here at the fifth string peg, we've added this peg because when they put pegs on these, they made them friction and they just don't work well. So now this banjo is ready to rock and roll. So we'll go up, keep going. And you can see that the keys, where I look at those, I'm gonna switch it over. There you go. So it has really nice keys. These are similar to the keys that were on the Gibson banjos in the uh, 60s and late 50s. Okay, now we'll come down the neck and, uh, okay, so we're starting at the headstock. And I just want you to see that this neck's in really good shape. It's mahogany, it's beautiful. And then uh, we're going to look at the resonator. Now this resonator, you'll see a little bit of film in the finish, which isn't a big deal. And this is actually rosewood, I believe, which is a very expensive wood that you can't even get anymore. So once again, if you buy a 40-year-old banjo, you're gonna get qualities of wood that aren't even available today. All right, so I'm gonna play one more thing and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Basically, 
these we sell these for a thousand dollars. If this was an American-made banjo, it'd be about thirty-five hundred, and it probably wouldn't be a whole lot better. Okay, so now I'm gonna get another banjo. And I'm going to tell you the number of this because this looks very similar to the banjo we just did. And this is number 711. Okay? So that's 711. And uh, so here we go. <laughs> So 711 is similar to the banjo I just showed you. Okay, so let's look at this banjo, and this is going to be pretty much almost identical to the other banjo that we just uh, showed you, which was 725. This one is number 711, as we said, okay. So the only difference between these banjos is that the tailpiece looks a little different on this one, okay. And let's go up the neck, and you'll see the bow ties. Go up to the headstock. You'll see it says Alvarez. We turn it around. Now, the, these keys are a little different than the other keys. These are actually brand new keys because the keys on this banjo weren't very good. So we replaced that. And I'm gonna, let's go back down the neck, and you'll see that this banjo is almost in perfect condition. Um, it's amazing the amount of people that bought banjos years ago and never learned to play. Also, same thing with the resonator. It's got rosewood. It's a veneer. Um, heavy duty tone ring, and it has the fifth peg, which we'll all move towards the fifth peg. There you go. All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play all these banjos back to back. So while you're hearing the banjo, banjo number one ring, then you'll then hear a new banjo. So here we go, I'm gonna play, uh, and I'm gonna tell you which ones. Okay, so here's 711, here we go. And this happens to be 735, so here we go.
We will now play 725, which is almost identical to 711. Okay, so that's it. So if you have any questions, you can call me, Jeff Kowal, at 404-218-8580. Now, we've gone out into the marketplace, and we have found about 15 or 20 of these Japanese banjos. We've taken them totally apart, and we do have them that go up to about $2,300 or $2,400. They just get fancier and better, and uh, it's the best deal on a banjo today. So if you have any questions, give me a call at 404-218-8580. 8580. Okay, so now we're just going to have the uh, new tech here click on capture. We'll click on capture and it will uh, quit. <laughs> <laughs> 